just offered us that opportunity, but you've told us that we are to come. And uh, we thank you that you promised us that uh, you would hear our requests and that you would answer our prayers. And <clears throat> we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in his will, knowing that you have all power and all authority and uh, all glory, that any result is going to be uh, because of you, not because of us, but we do have a part to do and a, a role to play. And we'll see that here in just a minute in, in Joshua. God, I pray tonight for each of the requests that have been named. I think of Brother Gonzalez and the folks he's invited to church and he's praying for that you'd uh, <clears throat> work in their hearts and bring them out to church. But uh, also I pray this weekend that as we uh, assemble on Sunday, that God, we wouldn't just see one soul saved, but we'd see many souls saved. And Lord, you have the power to do that, and I pray that you would. I do pray for some folks that are ill tonight. I think of Veronica and, and uh, others that uh, we could name so many uh, that have various illnesses that hinder them. Some here, some aren't here tonight, but I do pray that you'd care for them. I do pray for Clara, that you'd bless her as she has her procedure tomorrow, and that you'd give the doctors wisdom and perfect success and uh, strengthen her body and allow her to recover quickly. <clears throat> Lord, we lift up the uh, names of the people that have been mentioned already tonight, some that we didn't know their name, but we know their, their face and their situation. I think of Brother Sanchez's requests for people he works with and even uh, folks that he's witnessed to throughout the week, that, uh, God, that you would work in their lives. Thank you for bringing a young man in on Sunday that could come and, and hear the truth in our church. And I pray that you worked in his heart and will continue to do so and will bless him. Please be with folks that are traveling like Mr. Mendez and give them safety. Give him safety as he uh, is away from us and bring him back to us safely. And I pray for Mrs. Mendez's health and for her healing as well. Lord, I pray tonight for <clears throat> the uh, many opportunities that we have that you would give us eyes to see the people that are in need of salvation and give us a heart with a burden to reach them and uh, I just think of what Mr. Spencer said in chapel yesterday afterwards talking to me that uh, at his advanced age, he understands <clears throat> there's not much time and there's much work to be done and we need to be busy and not be casual about it. Lord, I do pray you'd bless our Resurrection Sunday services, the message, the attendance, the results. Pray for the Assisted Living Center that you'd bless the results and the messages there and the, and the mission, uh, the, the ministry there that we would see success and that there'd be somebody saved there very soon. We do pray for uh, <coughs> many, many unspoken requests tonight that you'd meet those needs and answer those prayers. You know each one perfectly and completely, and you have a will for each one. We pray that you would accomplish your will and give us uh, blessings and encouragement by seeing you answer those prayers. Lord, tonight as we <coughs> uh, think of the um, uh, school, I, I pray that you'd bless the, the pre preparations for the coming year, provide the staff that we need, provide everything that uh, we would need to continue, and I Thank you for the souls that have been saved in the school this year. And I pray that you'd continue to work and uh, let them uh, uh, grow. And for others that have not yet received Christ, that they would be saved. Lord, now I pray that as we open the word of God tonight, you'd bless our time in the Bible and uh, give us ears to hear and give us a heart. Uh, and Lord, I pray that you'd give wisdom to, to each of us, uh, the wisdom that comes from your word and from uh, you and the things you can do in our lives that we cannot do ourselves. And, so we ask you to have your will in our lives now. But please bless this time we spend in the Bible for the next few moments, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to look at a little city tonight called Ai in Judges, I'm sorry, Joshua chapter number 8. Joshua chapter 8. The word Ai in Hebrew means ruin. And uh, probably because that's the way it was left after the battle was over. Ai is not very far from Jericho, not very far from Bethel. <clears throat> They're all right down there together, not too far. A little bit to the uh, east and a little bit north of Jerusalem. Little place. Maybe, oh, someone thought maybe there might have been um, <clears throat> a couple of thousand people that lived there at the most. And... Uh, <clears throat> Could have been as many as 10,000. We don't know. Joshua 8, 25 talks about that a little bit. But uh, you remember the story. Israel went and fought against Jericho, a fortified city that was very, very impenetrable and impossible to defeat. And they defeated it. No, they didn't. God did. And God told them, beware. 
do not take the accursed thing. And he described what that was, that they were not to take the things in Jericho. The gold and the silver was to be put in the treasury, and the rest of it was to be burned. That was God's command. And one man named Achan violated that command, and because of that, the next battle after Jericho was before what we see tonight against Ai, and they got beat. Have you ever tried something for the Lord and not succeeded? Somebody said, uh, well, yeah, I've heard it said that uh, if you never fail, it's because you're not trying. But we do get used to the fact that God gives us victory. And uh, the principles in Joshua and Judges are very, very precise. When you do it God's way and when you are right with God and obeying God is the way to say that better. When you are right with God and you do things God's way, the outcome is going to be God's will. But sometimes we get defeated. Sometimes we find ourselves in a situation to where it seems like we lost. That's happened to Israel, and they went up against Ai, and they got beat, and some fellows died. We talked about that in a prior Wednesday. So what do you do after you've been defeated? You give up, or do you keep on going? The Bible says that a righteous man, even though he falls seven times, he gets up and keeps on going. That's in Proverbs. And so they're in between a rock and a hard place here, and Joshua I showed it to you last week. Joshua f- fell down on his face before God, and he said, Lord, everybody knows Ai is a small city, and everybody's going to hear that Ai defeated us in battle, and that's going to give all the enemy courage, and they're going to think we can whip these Israelites, and they're going to destroy us. Well, no, that wasn't going to be the outcome, but the thought was when the enemy hears that Israel's been defeated, it's going to look bad, and and it's going to make them brave, and the Israelites are going to be afraid. And, and so something had to be done about that. And so listen to me. God dealt with the sin, and now it's taken care of. We have the Valley of Achor, where Achan and his family were punished for their, for their crime. And now the sin's been taken care of. And folks, just remember one thing. It is possible to get right with God. Amen? It's always possible to get right with God. You say, Pastor, what about the unpardonable sin? Oh, I shouldn't have even mentioned that. But when you get saved, when you get saved, I like that song we sang, Once for All. You got saved once. If God gave you eternal life and took it away, it wasn't very eternal, was it? Everlasting life, another term he uses. And and the Bible makes it very clear. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. You cannot lose your salvation. There's no account in the Bible. You start reading. There's nobody in the Bible that loses their salvation. One of the more challenging books is Hebrews. And you can look at that verse by verse and see some questionable thoughts in there. But if you put it all together, you can't lose your salvation. You can lose God's blessing. You can lose lose God's power. So this is a practical passage because this is what you do after you get beat after you've been defeated what do you do and let's see what they do you can remain seated I'll just read a little bit and and we'll move through this I can't read the whole chapter for the sake of time but let's look at Joshua 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 chapter 8 we'll begin reading in verse 1 the Lord said unto Joshua fear not Neither be thou dismayed. Take all the people of war with thee, and arise, go up to Ai. See, I have given into thy hand the king of Ai, and his people, and his city, and his land. And thou shalt do to Ai and her king, as thou didst unto Jericho and her king, Only the spoil thereof and the cattle thereof shall ye take for a prey unto yourselves. Lay thee an ambush for the city behind it. That's pretty easy to understand those two verses, isn't it? There's a whole lot there. I ask you a question. Don't answer out loud. Just think about it. 
You think God wants you to, do you think God wants our church to retreat or advance? Go forward, amen? Do you think God wants you in your life to, to give up or to go forward? Amen? Listen to me. As a born-again Christian, you can be right with God and you can, you can see God bless your ministry and your efforts and your labors and your prayers and, and, and your life. It, it can be done even if you've been defeated somewhere along the way. You say, well, pastor, you don't know what I've done. Well, I don't know what you've done, but I know what the blood of Christ can do. Amen? I know what God can do. His mercy endures for two weeks, right? Oh, wait a minute. Maybe a month? Was that what it was? I'm a little short still there. What's the word? Forever. God's mercy never ceases. It's a good thing because we need his mercy, don't we? Reading Lamentations, of all the books to be encouraged by, Lamentations might not be the one you would choose. If you know anything about Lamentations, Joshua wrote it. They called Joshua the weeping prophet. Of course, the word lament means to grieve or to weep or to be sad. And In Lamentations, Joshua, not Joshua, Jeremiah, I, my J's are missing me up here. Jeremiah wrote Lamentations, and Jeremiah was weeping prophet. And Jeremiah wrote that book, grieving over what had happened in Jerusalem but he says right in the middle of the book, I still have hope. <clears throat> what if, I hope you understand this, I'm trying to understand it, so maybe I can explain it a little bit. What if God let you go through a season of, <sighs> what's the word, famine, failure, uh, unproductivity, lack of results, uh, dry spell we call it. What if God lets you go through a dry spell in your life just to see if you trust him? Could he, could he do that? We just got finished with the book of Job. Talk about a dry spell. What if God lets you go through a season to where you didn't see a whole lot of result? Just to see if you trust him. Or if you believe him. Do you believe him? Folks, you've got to believe him. Israel, like I said, they're in between a rock and a hard place, and here's what that means. They've beat Jericho. <clears throat> they're in the land. They have no more manna coming down. They have to eat the fruit of the land now, and, and, and there's all these enemies in the land, and, these, and you've got two choices with an enemy. You beat him or he beats you. Pretty simple, isn't it? Hey, let's just stop right there for a minute. You've got two choices with the devil. Either he defeats you or you're victorious. And the Bible says, resist the devil and he'll flee from you. That's encouraging. The enemy's enemy, by definition, the enemy is not going to sit back and watch. He's coming. He doesn't want you there. He's coming after you. And Israel's got to either win some battles or be destroyed. There's no middle ground for them. And here's AI. And, and, and you can think about, <laughs> there are people... In any situation, I think of Thomas, <laughs> doubting Thomas, you know, the, 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 the disciple. And the doubting Thomas is the one that, that was missing the night that Jesus appeared to the disciples. Uh, they were in a room and Jesus appeared to them and Thomas wasn't there. He missed the service that night. He should have been there. And then later, he told, he told him, he said, I'm not going to believe he rose from the dead until I can put my finger in his wounds. And then Jesus appeared to them and said, Thomas, put your finger in the wound. And, but before all that, back when, <laughs> back when they were going to Jerusalem the very last time before the crucifixion, uh, like a little before last Sunday, if we're looking at the timeline we're in right now where the crucifixion would have been either today or tomorrow, but a week ago they were coming to Jerusalem and, and, and the Lord said, we're going to Jerusalem. And Thomas tells the other ones, well, let's go die with him, you know. I'll go with him and I'll die with him, but there's not any hope of a good result. Well, what a good result, amen? <clears throat> there's always somebody in the crowd that's going to say, ah, oh, it's hopeless. Ah, uh, you know, <coughs> this is never going to get any better. Ah, uh, these students, they're never going to listen. Ah, uh, these people, they're never going to get saved. Ah, uh, you know, <coughs> folks, don't do that, amen? Somebody was saying, we're going to AI again? They just beat us. 
we shouldn't go back there again. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go around to them. Let's go fight another city. But it's hard to find one any smaller or less important than Ai. Ai is a little place. And so if you see verse 1, it doesn't really matter what anybody thinks. The Lord said, go to Ai. I'll go up to Ai in the middle of the verse. And the Lord said, I've given into thy hand the king and the people and the city and his land, and you're going to defeat them in verse 2. So it's God's will we go forward. It's God's will we try again. Somebody, I've seen this happen in Christians' lives. In every church I've ever been in, somebody will get discouraged and quit going to church, and they just put their life on pause. What I mean by pause is they're just not doing anything for God. They just get up in the morning and eat and go to work and come home in the evening and eat and go to bed and that's their life and they die. <sighs> How sad is that? Why would that happen to somebody? Because they lost their faith. They, they, they quit believing God could do something with them. Folks, don't stop. God can do something, amen? And, and it's the Lord's will that they go forward. So there's no question of what they're supposed to do. They're given this command and so look at verse 3, Judge Joshua 8, 3. <clears throat> Joshua arose, and all the people of war to go up against Ai, and Joshua chose out 30,000 men of valor and sent them away by night. That's 15 times more than the force they sent the first time about. Verse 4, he commanded them, saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city, behind the city, Go to, not very far from the city, but be ye all ready. I was explaining to my high school Bible class the battle plan here. It's a pretty good plan. <clears throat> They've got an ambush set up, 30,000 folks. Then Joshua takes some more folks, and he approaches the city. And I won't read this, I'll tell you for the sake of time. And he approaches the city, and the men of Ai come out, and all the Israelites turn around and run away. And the men of Ai go, ah, we beat them once, we'll beat them again. And when the men of Ai turn and chase this group that uh, uh, runs away, then the ambush comes in and burns the city. And it was a good plan. It was God's plan. Folks, God's got good plans. What's God's plan for a church? What's God's plan for a church? They made a movie, I don't know, 50 years ago, maybe 40 years ago, called The Gospel Blimp. Anybody ever seen that movie? It's a, kind of a satirical thing. There's this church, and they're trying to figure out how to get the gospel out. And, and they're thinking, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And one guy says, well, let's, let's hire a blimp and dump a bunch of tracks out of the blimp. Folks, that's not God's plan. God's plan is for you and I to spread the gospel. Amen? And there's lots of ways to do that. God will put people in your path. And you need to go and find people and go door to door is one of the part of that plan. But every day we... Virtually every day, we come across people. The fellow that fixed the back door back there for me a couple of weeks ago, I think I told you, he, is, he was born in Jerusalem. He's Jewish. I said, I asked him, how's your Hebrew? He said, I was born there. I can speak Hebrew. <laughs> and we were talking about different words and how to pronounce them. And, and I'd say a word, and he'd look at me and shake his head. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and I talked to the guy a little bit about salvation, and, and I gave him a tract. And, and the thought is, Every time you come across somebody, that's a candidate, amen? Everybody's a candidate. Everybody, everybody you come across. Witness to people. Get the gospel out. That's God's plan. I can't go through the whole thing right now, but we need to pray first, amen? And then we need to look for God's will. We need to invite folks to church. We need to get the gospel out. We need to send out missionaries. And God will bless. There's just no question about it. So after being defeated... How did they win against Ai? Number one is they had faith. And you can see in verse 7, he says, Joshua is talking to him in Joshua 8, 7. He says, Ye shall rise up from the ambush and seize upon the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. I'm going to ask you a simple question. Do you have confidence in God? Not what God can do. I hope we all have that confidence. Just believe or read your Bible, you can see that. Do you have confidence that God can give you victory? Amen? Pastor, I was defeated. Yeah, I know. But that doesn't mean God's done with you. 
God can give you victory. Some, sometimes we disqualify ourselves when God's just waiting for us to come back to him so he can use us again. And you say, well, but I've sinned. Yeah, I know that, but, and don't let me abuse this verse, but if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us, cleanse us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1, 9. I'm not saying don't obey God. I'm saying you can be right with God. And let me explain something to you. If you're not right with God and you say, well, I don't know what to do. I'm weak. I, 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 I can't change myself. I'm aware of that. God can change you. But you say, I just don't see any way that this is going to change. I just want you to know something. God changed you when you got saved. Why couldn't he do that again? They defeated Jericho. Somebody around that battlefield, uh, one of the Israelites is saying, look, guys, Jericho, Ai, God gave us that victory. He can give us this one over here. God saved you. What, what kind of victory was that? Now there's a little battle to fight compared to that. And folks, God's good at little battles too. And you may think of it as your own big battle, but still, God's good at battles. Confidence in God. Joshua, Joshua says, we're going to win this thing. God said, I've given it to you, and Joshua believed him. Now there's just two more things. I'll be fast. In verse 3, in verse 5, in verse 11, in verse 16, in verse 24, we see the same idea. Look at verse 3. Joshua arose and all the people of war. Back in verse 1, God said, take all the people of war. Look at verse 5. I and all the people that are with me. Verse 11, all the people. Verse 16, all the people. Verse 24, if I can turn the page here. It came to pass when they made an end. It says uh, that... Uh, all the Israelites returned unto Ai. <clears throat> I get the idea God wants us all to be involved. Amen? There's a saying that <laughs> jumps out. The first time I heard somebody use it, it was a, a pastor that I knew up in Utah. And he, he used, you've heard it, many hands make light work. Many hands make light work. If I said... Dantes, I want you to move all the chairs in the auditorium up against that wall. Oh, boy. That's going to take half an hour, 45. Well, Dantes is pretty fast. He's a strong guy. But what if 50 people take on that same task? It would be done in five minutes easy. Well, the same thing applies when it comes to, to church. If everybody would invite somebody to church, we'd have visitors. If everybody would pray for souls, we'd see people saved. If everybody would get involved, we would see God do great things. God wants us all involved. You say, Pastor, I can't do anything. I disagree. God said he put members in the body. The body is the church. To, he uses the word to edify it, to build it up. And he says some people are heads and some are feet and some are hands and some are eyes and some are ears. But you've all got a right place to be. You've got a job to do. You've got an ability that God can use in the body, which is the church. We're not all the same. We don't all sing. We don't all preach. We don't all whatever. We don't all run the sound booth. But we all do something, amen? Find something to do. And, and if I was to ask you to list the things you do in the church, attendance is not the only thing that should be on the list, <laughs> There should be some other involvement, some ministry. And, and just for the record, folks, you're serving the God of heaven. You say, I don't think I make much difference. You're serving the God of heaven. You know, Nehemiah was a cupbearer to the king. How hard is that? But that was his job. And you've got to have a cupbearer. You and I have got some job that God can use us to do. Some of us do a lot. Some of us do... Other things, but we all do something that counts for God. If you did it because you love the Lord, we could sing little as much when God is in it, if you want to sing that when we close tonight. But folks, we all ought to be involved. God says, all the people, all the people, all the people, all the people. 
So they had to have confidence. They had to have a comprehensive participation. And then this is pretty straightforward stuff here. Look at verse 4. He commanded them saying, Behold, ye shall lie in wait against the city. And in verse 2, God said, Lay an ambush for the city. So what's he doing? In verse 8, you see the phrase, According to the commandment of the Lord shall ye do. You see in verse 27, if you look in Joshua 8, 27, it says, uh, according unto the word of the Lord, which he commanded Joshua. This is pretty simple stuff, but compliance means we just do what God said to do. You say, well, pastor, I I don't see how that's going to work. You don't have to see how it's going to work. You just got to do it. And God will make it work. Yeah, look at look at it from my perspective. I <clears throat> been here about eight years now, so that's about four hundred weeks. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. So let's see, eight times fifty is four hundred times four, sixteen hundred. Probably taught, preached sixteen hundred times in eight years, and I'm going to do it again on Sunday. I'm excited about Sunday school Sunday morning. I hope you're here for Sunday school Sunday morning. I really am excited about that lesson and uh, looking forward to that. And I'm looking forward to what God does in the Sunday morning service. And I've got something for Sunday night that's pretty exciting too. I hope you come for that. I'm excited about that as well. You say, well, how does it make any difference that you preach 4,000 messages? I really can't tell you, but God said keep doing it. And that's one of the ministries of our church is very important is the preaching ministry and the teaching ministry. And I'll just tell you this, if you came to church for the last eight years, I think Brenda's been here just about the whole time, some others of you as well, you've, you've heard a lot of Bible. And hey, you know what that does? Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I can't tell you how it works, but it works. Praise God, let's just do what he said and be faithful. You say, if I give that person a tract, if I witness to that person they won't listen. Your job is not to decide what the result is going to be. Your job is just to do what God said and give them the tract. Amen? Invite them out to church. The guy that, uh, there's a man that I bump into, not literally, praise the Lord. I drive by him on the way in in the mornings a lot. He likes to walk his little dog at about quarter till eight, and I'm driving in about that time, and his name's Ralph. It's easy to remember because I fellow got saved in Maryland named Ralph that I got to know real well, but this fellow's name's Ralph, and uh, <clears throat> so he was walking down the street with his dog the other day, and I rolled the window down and asked him how he's doing, and uh, offered his dog a dog bone. His dog's on a diet like me, so he can't have a dog bone, and uh, he, I said, hey, Sunday morning is Easter, and we're going to have services at 11. Why don't you come out? And he said, you know, I think I might do that. Amen? It just Just be part of the team. Participate. I don't know how it's going to work, Pastor. I know, but just use God's plan. Just do what he said. Go ye in all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. Folks, everybody needs to hear the gospel. They say they won't believe. Yeah, some of them will. And you don't know that some of them will, and then some might will believe later. So think about Jericho and Ai, and look at the, the comparison. In the end, the result was the same, and I didn't read it to you. But at the end of the battle, they win. And uh, it's just, you can read that later on if you would like. Uh, In verse 26, Joshua stretched out the spear, and uh, they uh, utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai in verse 26. Same principles. God says, do it my way. The same dependence. God said, I'm going to give the victory. The same faith, confidence that God would do what he said. And the same outcome, defeating the enemy. That can happen in your life, amen? You got a battle you're fighting? Just got to ask you, do you think God can win it? I do. Well, here's what we say. Well, God can win that battle for them, but my situation is different. No, not really, amen? Same God, same flesh, same world, same devil. God can give us a victory, amen? Amen? Little old AI could have been a huge problem, but once they got the sin out of their camp, victory was theirs. And they got bigger battles to fight than this because, well, we'll see some interesting things in the next couple of weeks. But at one point, 
one of the kings says, hey, look at these Israelites. They've defeated Jericho. They defeated Ai. They defeated Bethel. We better do something about these guys. And a whole bunch of people gang up on them all at once. There's a lesson there. You need to fight this battle, whatever battle you're fighting right now, and win it. Because there will be some bigger battles later on. You don't want to get stuck, amen? Let's all stand and pray. Father, increase our faith. Help us to believe what the Bible says. and Understand that when you taught us about Joshua and about Ai and about Israel's second attempt to, de to defeat this city, that uh, when they got the sin out of the camp and they did things your way, they were victorious. They followed your plan. They all participated. They had faith that you would give them the victory, and you did. I know tonight there are people in this room probably more than we could understand, that are fighting battles in their life against one thing or another. The devil's trying to get a foothold, or he's got one, and he's trying to get more. And God, please give the victory in those lives. And I pray for those folks that you'd give them the faith to trust you and just not believe that they're permanently defeated, but to understand that they can have victory in their life once again. Please bless our closing hymn now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Mr. Dolman. 397, as little as much when God is in it. 397. In the harvest field, the ripe end, there's a work for all to do. Hark, the voice of God is calling. To the harvest calling you Little as much when God is in it Labor not for wealth or fame There's a crown and you can win it If you'll go in Jesus' name When the conflict here is ended And our worst on earth is right he will say to all the faithful, Welcome home, my child, well done. Little as much when God is in it, Labor not for wealth or fame. There's a crown and you can win it If you'll go in Jesus' name. All God's people said, I have a question for you, if you don't mind raising your hand. How many of you would be able to sit down with a Bible and show somebody at a church service like this uh, Sunday how to be saved? You say, Pastor, I could do that if you'd raise your hand. Okay, very good. Wouldn't it be great if we had to use five people on Sunday? Amen? Now, I've got to tell you, if somebody comes forward, I will find someone to take and show them how to be saved. The first place you would go is that room right there. That's the only one. If you go back there, you better have a machete with you because there's flowers and, whoo boy. I don't know if that's a great place to go, but you could make it happen back there if you had to. Uh, but we've got classrooms. Don't go to the foyer because when church is dismissed and everybody goes out there, it's going to disrupt you. Uh, but uh, we've got other places. You might think, of where would I take somebody? And remember, that might not be available. And, uh, but it would be a blessing if we had to, had to have five people saved on Sunday. Amen? God could do that. I say, that'll never happen, Pastor. Well, ye have little faith. Come on, amen? God could do that. Let's pray that he does. With every head bowed and every eye closed, who has unspoken prayer requests tonight, and we'll pray for those. Brother Gonzalez, dismiss us in prayer, please. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, once again, come.